So we've just been thinking about the nature of fake teaching. So let's look more specifically at what the content of that fake teaching is likely to be. What are they actually saying? Well, it's not completely clear in this text what was actually being taught, but we do get a rough feel, a rough flavour of what was going on. We've already seen in the first section that Paul referred to these fake teachers as insubordinate rebels. It's just the teaching is empty and they are deceiving people. He says especially those of the circumcision party. And so it seems to be this teaching, this fake teaching, has a certain Jewish flavour to it. Um, Maybe a sort of Jewish Christian blend. And it was that that was helping these fake teachers to convince others that they were right. And we've seen this elsewhere. Uh, We've seen this elsewhere in the Bible. In fact, in the very early days of the early church, way back in Acts chapter 15, uh, the early church gathered everyone together, um, the elders, the apostles, uh, leaders within the church, to actually discuss this idea of whether it was important, whether it was essential for Christians, believers in Jesus, to continue with uh, the, the the laws of Moses uh, that, that dictated life and faith uh, of the people of Israel. Should that be continued by Christians? Uh, and we see that in Acts chapter 15. And they, they concluded in that, that big authoritative council, no. What is important is faith in Jesus and circumcision and all these dietary food laws are not essential to belief. What is important is faith in Jesus Christ. And we see this picked up again. This, this issue continually plagues the early church. Um, in Paul's letter to the Philippians, in Paul's letter to the Galatians, um, this issue arises again. And each time Paul affirms what is important uh, is not whether you follow carefully the Old Testament laws, the laws of Moses, circumcision, uh, certain food requirements, certain ceremonial rituals. That is not what is important. He says time and time again, the gospel The good news is that you and I can be made right with God through faith in Jesus Christ and him alone. It is Jesus that is the fulfillment of all of these Old Testament rituals that they point forward to uh, the greater fulfillment in Jesus Christ. It is his actions on my behalf that makes me right before God, not my law keeping, not my ceremonial food dietary requirements. It is his perfect law keeping applied to me. That is what makes me right before God. That is the gospel. And you can see how radical that gospel is. It just cuts through all our attempts to contribute somehow to to, to our salvation, to make ourselves right before God on our own efforts. Um, We all have this inbuilt tendency somehow or other to try and earn God's blessing to try and contribute to salvation ourselves but Jesus shows us and the gospel demonstrates that we can't we can't add anything meaningful to our own salvation Um, in fact we should simply give up trying salvation you know coming to faith in Christ effectively is saying I can't do this I can't do this on my own Jesus has done it all for us this is this is grace this is amazing grace this is the gospel trusting in Jesus and his ability to do it for you on your behalf. But it seems that the fake teachers that we're dealing with here in Titus 1 wanted to offer the church something different. Um, Probably what they were teaching then is then adding something to the message of Jesus. That's what maintained their plausibility. Yes, they would have said something like this. Yes, Jesus. Yes, faith in Jesus. But also, let's, let's, let's not be too hasty here. Let's continue with the religious rituals of the old days, just to be sure. Um, perhaps they would even offer like a higher level of spirituality, a super saint status. Yes, have your faith in Jesus. But also, if you want to be really good before God, then follow the old laws and the traditions as well. That way you have the best of both worlds. That way there is a double blessing that's coming your way. Possibly something along those lines. And you can see why this type of talk gained a hearing among the early uh, believers in Jesus. Um, it sounded religious, it sounded plausible on the, on, on the surface. But actually, when you, when you stop and, and, and think about it, 
anything that adds to the the apostolic message the the saving message of of jesus anything that adds to that message is simply undermining the work of jesus um basically it's saying that the jesus alone is not enough that we have to do something in, in addition to him to to receive the blessing that god has for us and to receive his forgiveness and his his favor we have to do something more. Jesus is not enough. Effectively, that's what happens. It is undercutting this gospel of grace, sheer grace. You can do nothing on your own. With Jesus, through faith in Jesus, you have complete acceptance, complete favour of God upon you. Forgiveness of sins, adoption as a, as a child of God, that is all yours in Jesus. But this fake teaching will undermine those riches of the gospel. And so if we feel the need to somehow add to the work of Jesus through rituals and law keeping, then we haven't understood the radical, amazing depths of God's grace given to us in Jesus. You see, the fake teachers in Crete were, were playing on the immaturity of these early, sincere, but yet untrained believers um they're, they're playing on their subtle fears and so you could quite imagine that, that these sort of new believers in jesus were thinking to themselves you know what these guys are, these guys are right you know maybe we should adopt these jewish practices maybe we should start these rituals bring them on board just in case maybe, maybe faith alone is too fragile and so it might just be a good idea for us to top it up a little bit what harm can it do if we start practicing these Old Testament laws and traditions as well as professing faith in Jesus? These guys, they, they, they're religious. They, they, he went to the, the Jewish university. They obviously know what they're talking about. You can imagine this would have been a possible response to this fake teaching. Subsequent generations in the church have called this approach legalism, adding the law, adding legalities to following Jesus. Faith alone is not enough. Here is a bunch of laws and rules that you have to keep as well as faith in Jesus. Legalism. But as you can probably imagine, it is totally rotten. Its effect. It, it eats up true faith, life-giving faith, transforming faith. Legalism crushes that stuff. It eats it up. It, it causes it to rot. But interestingly, it looks like we get the suggestion that legalism was not the only thing that was being propounded by these fake teachers. Look down at verse 12. Paul uses this quote, uh, or maybe a, like a popular proverb or something, um, from a poet. He says, one of your own Cretans, a prophet, um, so to speak. He says, Cretans, this is the quote, Cretan, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, lazy gluttons. This testimony, says Paul, is true seems to be saying that Paul was 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 labeling these fake teachers not only as sort of religious you know people of the circumcision party not only teaching legalism so to speak but also he says they were behaving just like stereotypical Cretans um you know they, they, they were trying hard to line their own pockets just like stereotypical Cretans they were teaching for shameful gain what they ought not to teach We've seen that already. Their motivation was not care, wasn't even concern for the law, ultimately, uh, of God or the word of God or anything like that. They were doing it to make themselves rich, to line their own pockets, to gain traction, to seize power. You know, they know God, it says, but they deny him by their, their works. So it probably went a little something like this in general. You, the, te the teachers, the fake teachers, their, their, their headline would have been something like this. You need to add something to faith in Jesus. Paul's sort of right, but he's not completely right. You need to add something to faith in Jesus to be right with God. So I'm going to prescribe and give you suggestions, some rituals and some practices that you can follow. And if you do this, um, then you can be right with God and it will take your, your holiness up a, a notch or two, which actually means that once you've done that, um, then God is less concerned with how you live your life. Um, or rather, if you, if you top up your spirituality with these practices, then you can actually live 
you know, a freer life. You can, you can live slightly more uh, relaxed life. Um, so it doesn't actually matter who you sleep with. Uh, you, can, you, can, you can continue enjoying to party at the weekend, getting drunk, uh, because you can always claim it back again with all these rituals that I've given you. As long as you follow my teaching and keep listening to me, then you can live as you please. They were bringing legalism and license into the teaching of the church at Crete. And you can perhaps start to think how destructive this would have been to the church. And so we always have to ask ourselves, even today, as we sit here and listen to this, when, when we're listening to teaching, particularly uh, those of you who are members of Foundation, part of Foundation, but from other, maybe from other churches listening in as well, uh, or, or, you know, generally um, a member of the Christian faith, always ask yourself, what is the fruit of the teaching that I'm listening to? What is it doing to me? What effect is it having in me? Is it making me more like Jesus? More holy, more godly, more uh, radiant with joy? Or is it making me more like the world? Is this teaching making me more like the world? Am I just behaving in a similar way to my unbelieving friends and colleagues and co-workers? Is my life Aside from Sundays, is my life pretty much the same as everybody else's? What is the, the fruit of this teaching that I'm listening to? What is it doing to me? Does it help me? In other words, does it help me to get the truth straight? Does it help me to live out the truth? Does it shape me? Or does it simply make me more like everyone else in the world who doesn't know Jesus?